Thank you. Uh, morning, everyone. It's nice to be here uh, after a long time and seeing like a lot of the community in person and a couple of my friends are here. So thank you for joining the talk. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the topic today I'm going to talk about is continuous delivery, uh, which is kind of my pet peeve for some time. Uh, and in that context, I will introduce a project that I'm working on called Control Node, uh, which is basically just an Elixir library that uh, allows you to write your CD pipelines and orchestration as code in Elixir. So let's get started. Uh, yeah. So a bit before, about me before I get started, uh, I'm a software engineer at Adjust. We do mostly analytic stuff, uh, and I'm using Elixir and Go quite a bit these days. Apart from that, I'm your typical developer, so I like uh, mechanical keyboards, coffee, and free pizza. Uh, I guess that's uh, enough about me. Let's jump to the interesting part, because this is going to be a long journey. Uh, so before I dive down uh, into the talk, uh, let's try to understand what continuous delivery is. So, uh, and, uh, so under the umbrella term of continuous delivery, what do we actually want to achieve? Uh, so generally, uh, what we are trying to do is deliver your uh, latest releases uh, to the given set of environments. So uh, trying to come up with a generic definition, I don't know if it, uh, it follows what you're trying to do, but this is what I have experienced over a period of time across different uh, services that were delivered to production. So we are trying to make sure that your latest releases are delivered to the given environment automatically or semi-automatically. So that's essentially the gist of what CD pipelines do. Now, uh, there are various tools out there that allow you to do this. So you can uh, start from just manually copying, pasting your releases to your production server and just starting uh, your releases there. And this works out for small projects. And then you could go on the other end and start using k to uh, uh, deploy and monitor your uh, pr uh, production systems. So, uh, and I think we all know that k heavily uh, dominates this uh, space. Uh, so much so that I don't know like how many other uh, orchestration to, uh, tools are actively used in production to, uh, to, run, uh, to run different kind of services. So, and uh, I think we all, and uh, like in, 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 it's a settled fact that KHS is quite complex. Uh, not even in the community of KHS, anybody argues that it's not complex. So from that point of view, it kind of feels like this uh, C++ of orche uh, orchestrator tools. Uh, now, uh, I don't mean to like badmouth kids, but it, it actually solves a really complex problem. So no wonder the tool in itself is complicated, but yeah, uh, I do wonder if every scenario, every CD pipeline does actually need a, a complicated tool like kids for services that are not that big. So maybe something that is small or medium sized, does it also need something like kids? Now, another uh, dilemma of mine is uh, using Docker in production. Uh, I've grown up in a generation of developers that has just seen KHS and Docker as a norm for deploying production systems, so it, it comes maybe uh, semi-naturally or naturally to me to see that, okay, something's running in production and, uh, and uh, it's being uh, orchestrated via KHS. Uh, but using Docker in production also brings some of, uh, makes some, some things really hard. For example, uh, persistent storage is not a given. So you would have to make additional effort when you're using KH to bring it in, into Docker. So you would use persisted volumes or something like that. But when you're rolling out with Docker, that's not a given. You would have to make some additional configuration changes. Other than that, uh, debugging also becomes a bit harder. So when you're shipping your Elixir releases inside Docker into, uh, into your different environments, you can't just directly connect to your node. There is some additional hoops and some settings depending upon what kind of uh, tool or like maybe KH or some abstraction of KH that you are using. Uh, so this, this kind of like summarizes some of the issues that uh, I do see that there are when you're trying to build uh, your CD pipelines and uh, uh, run out with these or, uh, orchestrated tools. So this kind of uh, uh, motivated me or like you can say that the, this kind of like troubled me to into in investigating if, uh, if I could have something that is simple because much of the time I'm not building uh, like web scale, like uh, 100,000 or million user application. I want something that is simple and easily maintainable, deployable. 
So enter control node. Uh, this is, uh, as I mentioned, an Elixir library that allows you to build your own CD uh, tools. So there's nothing, uh, in, uh, it does not need any external orchestration tool to support it. It in itself implements the whole uh, state machine that will allow you to uh, deliver your production releases to, uh, to different environments and also monitor them and uh, uh, scale them. So this is mostly suitable for small to medium sized service deployments and, and I think majority of the projects out there do fall into this realm of small to medium size. I will elaborate on what exactly I mean uh, by small and medium towards the end of this talk but uh, just to draw the li line right now, it does not mean FANG scale. So you, uh, it is definitely somewhere below that, maybe 60 to 70 percent, which need a couple of, maybe a couple of tens of uh, service deployment, maybe a couple of hundred service deployments. Uh, so that being said, let's look at one, some of the uh, notable features that uh, this library offers. First and foremost, is it is stateless. So when you're building your CD pipeline, uh, you will not have to maintain your state in some embedded DB or store it on the disk. You do not have to do backups or create some Postgres database to, to hold the state. So the library it itself uh, is stateless. It does not mean that it does not have any state, but it is able to build its state from the, uh, from the CD definition that you write uh, when, uh, while you're building your CD pipeline. So the main, uh, so another core aspect this, uh, this library focuses on is simplicity. So with the, when you're building your project with control node, uh, the pipeline in itself, the definition in itself being simplistic, it also does not require a lot of uh, setup on the host server where you deploy your releases to. So the only thing that is needed there is SSH access and a, a proper SSH user with the, with the proper permission so that the control node pipeline can deliver the releases, can start them, can monitor them. Uh, so once, uh, once you have delivered your releases onto these host VMs, uh, control node will uh, natively monitor these releases. So by natively, I mean it, it'll use the uh, Erlang functionality or Elixir node monitoring functionalities to, to monitor uh, these nodes and make sure that they are always operational. And you can also define your own health check. So even in case the node is running and it's not healthy, uh, you can also uh, define specific health checks which would be run across the, uh, across the cluster uh, over a period of, uh, over some certain intervals. And if there is something that is wrong, then it will definitely try to do uh, failover workflow. So uh, yes, the control node comes with its own uh, failover uh, workflow, but you can definitely sidestep that and use Erlang's native service uh, monitoring uh, and restarting tool that is Heart. So Heart basically does the same thing. It checks that your service is online, and in case it is not running, then it will try to try to just restart it. Uh, then with Control Node, you can implement your uh, so uh, different. Uh, environments, for example, whenever you're delivering your service, you definitely want to have a testing environment, maybe a staging, and then you want to have the production environment. So you, uh, you are free to define as many environments as you want. And along with it, you can also define your own uh, deployment strategies. For example, you want to deploy your production environment in, in let's say, blue-green manner, or you want to do canary uh, deployment, or even if you want to do something custom, you're free to implement it and uh, specific to whatever environment you're delivering your services to. And one of the very uh, uh, fun aspect of building your pipeline with this, uh, with this project is that you get remote debugging out of the box. So the same CD pipeline that you build with control node, uh, you can just run it locally and start, and, uh, start observer inside it and then connect to your, all your remote nodes and then maybe start debugging or maybe inspecting issues. Uh, inspecting processes, and so on and so forth. So these are more or less the overview of some of the features that are there. Uh, now I will discuss a very simple CD scenario. So this scenario is quite straightforward, and I've seen some variation or something similar to this in most of the places that I've uh, worked at or uh, heard about who are trying to uh, deliver their uh, per, uh, uh, releases or services to production. So the story goes as follows. You have your GitHub uh, repository. Your awesome projects is hosted there. And the moment you have your master updated, you want to make sure that the latest releases are deployed to your testing environment. 
So right now we just have, uh, uh, for, this, for the case of this pipe, uh, pipeline and uh, setup, we only have one testing machine. And uh, let's say after certain iterations, you are satisfied with your uh, feature development and you're happy that everything is working fine and you want to make a release to production. So for production, you have two nodes uh, which have called prod1 and prod2. So, the, uh, so what you go uh, and do is you create a release in GitHub and once that release is created, it will automatically be rolled out to production. So in the gist, uh, updating the master update, updates the testing environment, and if you create a release in GitHub, it should go and update the, the production VM. So there are just two at the moment. Now the code for this repository, uh, for this pipeline, uh, is actually implemented with the uh, with control node, and you can check out the project on GitHub. It's look, it's called CN Ops, uh, CN for control node, and uh, uh, Ops is or Ops work. Uh, so what we will do is now see that workflow that I just described uh, in action. So demo time. Hopefully this will work out. Uh, I've tried it a couple of times. So. Uh, so, the project is running here, uh, if I can, cool. Uh, so, the test one is running at here, uh, test1.cnops.cloud. It's a fairly simple Phoenix project. I just uh, generated the stock Phoenix project and replaced this banner. So, the, num the, the number that you see beside the node is basically the PID of the service that is running on the testing machine, and below you see the version of the service that is running. So this is one, then we have uh, prod one, this is the production one, and then we have prod two. Cool. So what I'm gonna try to do is just make a small commit to the, to the master, and uh, we will see that the testing uh, uh, should update. So let's get started with this part. change the background color for this right now it's it's yellow uh, let's make the the most unharmful change that there could be so i'm going to just go and change this color to uh, green So before I go and uh, push this to production, uh, sorry, not production, but master, I will go ahead and log into our CD pipeline that is deployed uh, in a separate VM. So everything is running inside GCP at the moment. So this is, so let me just, cool. Okay, so now we are inside our CD pipeline. I will just connect to this. So the CD pipeline is running here. Uh, let's, so the project is called Hello. Uh, that, uh, the service name is just Hello, so it's uh, simple to, uh, to remember. Now I'm gonna do a push. The push is gonna push the changes to master. Let's come here. Okay, so the project is here. So, sorry. Okay, so the project is here. Uh, you can see I made a commit to the master. The GitHub Actions has kicked in. Uh, what is gonna happen in the GitHub Actions is that it is going to just execute mix release. A release tar is gonna be created and it's gonna upload that artifact. CNOps, what it is going to do is just basically polling the repository and checking whether uh, the master has been updated or not. The moment it detects that the master is updated, it is going to download the release and deploy it to testing. So let's wait for this to complete. And here is the, is the console. So we will see uh, it starting to deploy once this is complete, hopefully. Cool, it's almost there, almost there. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, I think we are almost there. Ah, nice. Ah, good, 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 good. 
Okay, I think we are done. Now we have to just wait and uh, for the pipeline to detect this and uh, deploy this. Cool, it detected it. Okay, so what it is doing is it found out that there is a new release. Uh, there is a new the the master has been updated and it downloaded the release, it extracted the release and deployed it to to testing. So if we go and refresh testing, we will see something. Yeah, okay, it works. Nice. So right now testing was updated. Uh, the next fun stuff is, let's say we are satisfied with this green color. It looks really fancy and nice. So we want to go and deploy it to production. So I'm going to just go and create a release in GitHub. And CNOPS uh, will uh, detect this release and deploy this to production. <sighs> OK. So here is the releases. I will go ahead, draft a new release. Uh, let's choose a tag name. I'm going to copy just the version that was listed in testing. Cool, cool, and let's publish this release, right? So now release, a uh, new release has been published. Let's wait for this tool to detect that. Again, fingers crossed. Uh, yep, cool. Okay, so now I detected that a new release has been deployed, uh, a, re a release has been created. It is doing the same uh, same workflow, getting the release uh, and extracting it and copying it over to, to production. So if we update production, it should work out. Don't worry, don't worry, this happens. <laughs> okay, so cool, it works. Uh, I can also reload the other node, so it works. So now we have seen that uh, the CD pipeline is actually able to deploy a release. Given the specific scenario, it is able to deliver your code to the respective environment. The other part when you're building an ops pipeline is that it should be able to monitor your releases and in case they fail, uh, it should be able to restart that. Now we're gonna do the most interesting part. Uh, I'm gonna log into testing and kill the testing in uh, VM. And hopefully it will restart uh, testing. So let me just keep the mic. Okay, so this is the pit of our testing uh, uh, service. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this. So the service is there. I am not bluffing. So here we will see that it will detect it, hopefully. Okay, so it detected that the release went down, and then it started the release deployment uh, workflow again. And uh, if I just go back, the testing should still be running, but you should see that there is a different node version, uh, the, there is a different PID uh, that is there, and the release version should still be same. Okay, so you can see that it's still running. Uh, everything is operational. Your system is still op uh, up and ready. So the same thing could also work with the with production. But this covers like the second part of of a CD pipeline is that it should be able to make sure that your release uh, releases are always operational and working in the given environment that you have deployed them to. Now, uh, the last part that I actually mentioned was that you should be able to use Observer locally from your system and debug any issues that you want to, uh, you might have or you want to inspect in, in, in your uh, respective environments. So what I'm gonna do is now uh, just connect. Uh, now I'm gonna go back, uh, uh, now I'm gonna log out from here and uh, Okay, so control node comes with three different modes. Uh, the mode can be configured with control mode uh, environment variable. The 
the most uh, uh, the mode that activates all the feature is the manage mode so when you are actually wanted to uh, when you actually want to run your pipeline you would run it manage uh, manage mode and then it will basically deploy your releases make sure that they are running and do all the fancy stuff in connect mode when you run the same pipeline in connect mode it will what it will just do is just start the cd pipeline and just connect to all your release nodes so it'll do nothing more than that and this is what we need in order to be able to debug something so right now I am starting this from my local system, and you will see. Uh, now I will show, just show you that uh, the uh, this is connected to all the release nodes that are there, and we will just start the observer and connect to one of the production nodes. Cool. So observer is up. And uh, I think we have all the nodes listed here. So you can look at the application. So let's switch to one of the production nodes. So here you have the hello service that is running. There's the Phoenix setup. You would go and look at the charts. You could go and look at the, at the processes that are there. Maybe you want to inspect something in case you have a production issue. So and every member on, in your team could just run the same pipeline definition locally in the, in the connect mode and you should be able to debug issues. So this covers the third aspect of uh, uh, building your pipeline with, uh, with the control node is that you should be able to debug it. Uh, coming back, uh, let's jump back to, to this because this worked out fine and I don't want to try my luck any further. So let's look at some of the things that you need to define in order to build this pipeline. So there are four different uh, specs that you need to define in order to build your pipeline with control node. One, uh, the first and the foremost is your release spec. So spec is just something uh, in, in control node terminology is just a struct. So the release spec is used to define a, a, a service module and service module is what actually monitors your ser uh, one service node. So here the release module needs to have a name and uh, the, name is the, uh, the name is basically the name of the service, the Elixir project, and then this base path is something where the uh, release stars of your service are copied to on the remote host. So on each remote host, the, your release star needs to be copied over and then started, so that's the base path there. Then uh, what you have is you want to define host spec. So host spec is basically the IP of the host where you want to deploy your release to, then an SSH user and a private key. Uh, so for a single host uh, spec only corresponds to one host. So if you want to have three hosts, for example, we had test one, prod one, and prod two. So you would need to define three host specs. And then there is a uh, registry. So registry is the place where control node will get your uh, release stars from. So uh, right now it just, support, uh, it just supports local registry. That is, uh, it means that uh, control node expects the release stars to be located on the file system where it is deployed. So it is up to you to, to figure out how to put them there. The CNOps project, it just monitors the GitHub repository and the moment it finds a new artifact, it downloads that and places it on the file system. And then it asks uh, a control node to deploy the new release. The last one is the namespace. Uh, the namespace kind of ties all these things together. So you could have different namespaces like testing, staging, and production. So you just define the tag for that space. You specify the list of hosts where that namespace is running. Then you define the registry spec where your tar file uh, release tars are located. Then you need to define the uh, release cookie so that when you do node.connect, it actually succeeds. So these, these are some of the uh, uh, core pieces that you need to put together in order to build your pipeline. Then you can implement some uh, logic around it in order to build uh, different kind of deployment strategies. Now, before, uh, now I want to discuss some of the details behind the scene, uh, just a sneak peek under the hood as to how we are able to do all this stuff, uh, how Control Node manages this. So the core piece that you need when you're trying to build a, a continuous delivery tool is service discovery. So without service discovery, you cannot figure out the state of your environment, and without figuring out the state of the environment, you cannot roll out releases properly. So there is something is bound to mess up if, if, uh, if you do not know the state of your uh, given environment or all your production environment correctly. So for this purpose, uh, uh, Control Node uses EPMD. So it assumes that EPMD is 
running on all the host VMs. It may not be running, in, in which case control will, will conclude that there are no services running on that VM. So that way, once control node boots up, it will uh, connect to the EPMD, retrieve all the information that it gets from there, and then collect, uh, connect to the respective release nodes that are running on the given VM. So and another important aspect of this whole uh, story is, uh, is the export flag that is there. Uh, this is the core of the whole thing. Without this, nothing will work. So control node comes with its own implementation of EPMD. Uh, which you need to provide when you are, uh, which you need to set when you are building your own pipeline. Uh, the reason for having its custom implementation is because we want to use SSH tunnels to uh, to connect different release nodes uh, to to the control node, so that it can manage them, monitor them, and uh, also in case when you are deploying new releases, it should be able to update them. Uh, so. Yeah, the picture is not all rosy, of course. Uh, it, it, there are some limitations and some quirks that are there. Uh, one is that you need to uh, you need to use Erlang 23 or greater. This is because the SSH tunnel APIs that it uses to, to connect and uh, monitor stuff, they were introduced in Erlang 23.0, so anything greater should work out fine. Now, SSH keys, yeah, PEM format is, does not work. It, it does not work out of the box, and I didn't put like additional effort to, to make it work. So. The best is to just uh, use uh, the ED25519 curve to generate your keys. It'll work out fine. Host names, yeah, host names for, uh, for all the you know, host VMs should be different. So let's say if you wanted to have three production VMs, you cannot name them prod1, prod1, and prod2. The names should be different, prod1, prod2, and prod3. That would work out because when you connect the nodes, it might end up with the same, different, uh, same node names, so that might be conflicting. Uh, yeah, so so the host VMs where you deploy your uh, stuff to, uh, it needs to support SSH tunneling. Should work out of the box. Uh, so far, we have seen control node in context of deploying Elixir services, uh, but it is not limited to that. So you could use uh, you could go beyond this point, and I have written down an example that. Uh, that is a simple uh, Go service. So it's a simple Go service that serves a hello world kind of message. And control node is also deploying this uh, to the testing environment. So let's, let me just show you that. OK, so yeah, this is the Golang service that, that is located in the project uh, I sh uh, uh, just showed the link to. And uh, the way it is working is that I have two projects within that repository. One is at the Golang project in itself, and the, another is an Elixir project. So once you commit to the master, what happens is that uh, this, uh, the GitHub actions create the Golang, uh, the Go binary from the, from the Go project, and then they copy that over to an Elixir project, which is just configured to run that binary. So, and after, uh, after the copying over the binary, the, the Elixir release is prepared, and then control node takes over, and that it detects that, okay, the, a new release has been, uh, the master has been updated, it copies the artifact, it deploys it, and the same story applies to any language which, where you could uh, create the binary, package it inside an Elixir project, or you could also extend it to uh, just running some binaries that are already available on your host VM. So this, uh, it is completely up to you to, to uh, kind of extend this, uh, this tooling. Uh, lastly, I would like to come back to the initial comment that I made regarding uh, small and medium-sized service deployments. So uh, we already saw that Control Node was deploying three, four services across three VMs. And uh, I think you should be able to deploy to maybe a couple of tens of uh, service deployment to maybe a couple of hundreds. So this number, please take it with a grain of salt because this is based on the fact uh, that how many number of interconnected nodes we could have and then the corresponding chatter that would be induced. But nevertheless, uh, I think while you increase your number of service deployment, it also reflects the the growth in your company and the added complexity that's going to come along. So you might already need something different, something like K8 to, to handle your infrastructure. Uh, the last final thought uh, that I would like to share in context of control node is that you should think about scaling your services vertically first. 
I know it's quite easy to deploy multiple nodes, but uh, it's in, in context of deploying Elixir services, it is quite easy to scale them vert vertically because Beam gives you that out of the box. So you, you can just throw more cores at it and it'll try to use them as efficiently as possible. Now I'm not advocating that you should uh, just have single node deployments. Of course, if you should have multi-node deployments, uh, you should have redundancy to improve your uh, availability. But in terms of uh, scalability, it would be best to take a step back, evaluate, because the less the nodes there are, the, it's easier to manage and uh, uh, easier to manage and then maybe probably maintain this, uh, uh, this, uh, the different environments that you have. With this, I thank you all. And if I was able to intrigue you into this project, you can check out the project on, on GitHub at the link. And this is also available on all Hex. So in case you want to try out, there is an introductory example. And if you have some thoughts and ideas or you want to bounce some, uh, something off me, uh, you can ping me on uh, Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. Thank you. Hey folks, so let's do five minutes of questions. Um, will everyone, I'll ask an online question first and then maybe we can take uh, in-person questions. Um, so the uh, top voted one here is, is there a security mechanism, um, for example, to limit access via observer to the production nodes? Uh, the security mechanism is just SSH keys. So once you, uh, sorry. So the security mechanism, like the, the way I was able to connect to these uh, nodes is that I, my SSH key has been whitelisted to be able to connect to all these release nodes, uh, so all the host VMs. So it's, it's not out connecting it out of the box. So any user from your team who wants to run the pipeline locally and connect to the release node needs to have his SSH key whitelisted. Thank you, and how about an in-person question? You can raise your hand. Okay, so maybe another virtual one. Um, is it possible to revert a bad release? Is it possible to revert a bad release? Yeah, it's just it's the same as just deploying a new release. So there's no technical difference. So you could just deploy an old release. Um, another round of maybe, you know, in-person questions. Raise your hand. I get my mask on and I'll run to you. OK. So another virtual question it is. Um, this is a long one, so it might take me a moment to read it. Oh, hang on. Okay, not so long. Um, does control node require a separate VM to function and detect um, production node if a production node dies? If a production node dies. Uh, I didn't get the question. <laughs> yeah, because, so um, does control node require a separate VM to function and detect that a production node dies? Uh, no, uh, it does not need a separate VM. So the control node, uh, so the VM that I showed where the control node logs were there, so that's the only place where you have deployed your CD pipeline. So you don't need anything additional than just deploying your uh, pipeline into some VM. That is not one of the VMs where your actual releases are running. Um, and since we still have about a minute, is control node cloud native? Is controlled node cloud native, i.e., is there an, are there any integrations with AWS, GCP, or Azure? No, I don't want it to have integrations. This like something uh, I. So the point of the, this whole project is to make it simplistic uh, and be able to just pick up all your stuff and deploy it anywhere else. So this is not limited to any cloud provider per se. You could just deploy your control node at one cloud provider and manage all your node across maybe multiple cloud providers, bare metal or whatever you want to do with your environment. So let me ask a final time, an in-person question. So I have a simple question. Uh, do you use it on production in your company uh, for some services? Uh, actually, the project started out for me to, to try to build a debugging tool. So I wanted to be able to connect to the uh, release nodes that we had. So I, it does, I did started using it as that. And then I decided that, OK, maybe if I'm able to connect, then I should be able to even deploy. But the deploy part is not there. So I don't deploy. <laughs> so, uh, but the live example does actually do that. So systems should be fairly similar to this. <laughs>